Hello, I'm Luke O'Neill and here I am in my lab in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. So on this week's update, therapeutics. Now there's a massive effort still out there treating people in hospital who have got COVID-19 to help them and get them out of hospital and stop them getting really sick and sadly stop them dying as well. And the US government has bought 1.2 million doses of the Regeneron antibody cocktail that was used to treat Donald Trump. If I can get better, anybody can get better. Now, this is a very interesting medicine. It latches onto the virus and eliminates the virus. And it's been shown to decrease the viral load tenfold in people. That's a massive effect. It decreases hospital stay and decreases illness is a tremendous thing. Secondly, the antiviral drug remdesivir, which has been kicking around now for a few months, I guess, that decreases stay in hospital as well. It doesn't really affect um, sort of outcome to some extent, but it does decrease time in hospital. Over $3 billion of that drug has been sold now. So again, we're seeing progress now on the therapeutic front to join, of course, the vaccination effort to treat this virus. And an aspect of COVID I need, don't know much about, but actually turns out to be very important, a thing called mucus. Now we all make mucus when we're infected, you can call it snots if you like. It turns out if you're a biochemist like me, snot is very interesting. It's full of different biochemicals. And they've done a big study now, over two and a half thousand people with COVID-19, they took the mucus from them and they measured all the different proteins in that mucus. They found over 300 proteins were elevated in the mucus of someone with COVID-19. Of course, the question is, what are those proteins? Well, two main types. One causes coagulation and clotting, and that's a, a sign that this disease is to do with clotting. Some of the stuff in your blood might end up in your mucus, I suppose, and they can measure these clotting factors in the mucus. But more importantly, a thing called complement. Now, complement is a well-known thing in immunology. It complements antibodies. It helps antibodies do a job to fight the virus. And it turns out mucus is full of complement, and this might help antibodies fight the virus. And of course, if you've more complement in your spit, that mucus will kill the virus. So it's a really active area, and it's a fascinating business. It's mucus, really, really important. And a common feature of COVID-19, everybody knows about this, is you lose your sense of smell and your sense of taste. And it's a feature of this virus. Big study done now. Again, science really is good when it digs into these kinds of things. And there was over two and a half thousand patients were assessed. Uh, over 70% lost their sense of smell and over 40% lost their sense of taste. So it's a very common feature of this disease. And one good thing is with severe disease, it's not a feature. So it seems to be a feature of mild disease. And it's a very unexpected thing. You might've thought that it might get worse with disease, but it turns out the sense of smell and taste isn't quite so badly affected if you've got severe disease. What I like about this study is well, how do you measure someone's um, sense of smell and taste? They fit in a questionnaire. Guess what the questionnaire is called? It's called SNOT22. Now that stands for Sinonasal Outcome Test 22. They have a sense of humor with these people, I guess. But also they got them to smell all these different lovely chemicals. So they could smell rose, lemon, orange, cloves, turpentine. They got to sniff all these and then rate the smells. And then from that then they could evaluate whether someone's sense of smell was being affected. But more importantly, this could be a predictor of the type of disease you might end up having. So this area is a very important one for understanding the disease process. And you can hear these stories and more on my weekly update on COVID-19 with Pat Kenny on Newstock.